Now here we have a curve that's given in terms of a single parameter t. So for values of t we can get values of x and y. In other words we can get points on the curve. t can be any real number except minus 2. The reason that it cannot be minus 2 is because if it was minus 2 then we would have division by 0. We would have minus 2 plus 2 in the denominator which would mean that we have um, 2t minus 1 divided by 0. We can't divide by 0. Similarly here for y. So to get points on the curve we can use the single parameter t. So if we can pick any value for t, t except minus 2. So if we pick t equals naught and plug it in here we get 2 times naught minus 1 which is minus 1 over naught plus 2 which is 2. We get x equals minus a half. And when t is naught, we get y equals naught over naught plus 2, which is naught. So when x is minus a half, y is naught. So minus a half naught is a point on the curve. I've worked out a second point on the curve by letting t equal minus 3 over 2. So we plug minus 3 over 2 in for t here. And we have 2 times minus 3 over 2, which is minus 3. Minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4 over minus 3 over 2 plus 2, which is minus one and a half plus two, which is plus a half. Multiply above and below by two to get minus eight. And to get y, we plug minus three over two in here. So we have minus three over two divided by minus three over two plus two. That's minus three over two divided by a half, or minus three divided by one, which is minus three. So when x is minus eight, y is minus three. So minus eight comma minus three is a second point on the curve, and so on. We could pick any real number for t, except t equals minus two, and build up points on a curve. So we have x in terms of t and y in terms of t. Both x and y are in terms of a single parameter t. However, we could eliminate t. Um, so we can get, get back to the Cartesian form of the equation of a curve. Just get y in terms of x. So to do that we could start with this equation here. Multiply both sides by t plus 2. So we have t plus 2 times x equals 2t minus 1. And we could solve this for t and plug the result into the second equation here. And then we have an equation connecting y and x. That's the familiar Cartesian form. So multiplying both sides of this equation by t plus 2 will give this equation here. Then what you need to do is isolate t. So we can multiply x into this so we get tx plus 2x and I've brought the t terms to the left hand side so the tx is already on the left hand side the plus 2t is brought over becomes minus 2t I brought the non t terms to the right hand side minus 1 is on the right hand side and the plus 2x is brought over so then we can factorize t out of the left hand side here we have t into x minus 2 equals minus 1 minus 2x or t equals minus 1 minus 2x over x minus 2 so we have t in terms of x that's all we did, rearrange this to get t in terms of x. Now plug this into the second equation. And then we can get y in terms of x. So this is what we get, replacing t with this here. Now, what we could do then is multiply above and below by x minus 2. So we do that in order to get rid of x minus 2 in the denominators. So on top we get minus 1 minus 2x. x minus 2 times this fraction here will give minus 1 minus 2x and we also have to multiply x minus 2 by plus 2 which will give plus 2x minus 4. We can see that these cancel out so we get minus 1 minus 2x divided by minus 5. We can then divide both of these terms by minus 5 so we get plus 2 fifths x, which I've written first, and then we have minus 1 over minus 5 is plus a fifth. You can see that this is actually the equation of a line. So our parametric equations turn out to describe the equation, turn out to describe a straight line. Here is a graph of y equals 2 fifths x plus 1 fifth. When x is naught, y is 1 fifth. As for the slope of the line, if 
we pick any point on the line and increase x by one unit, then y will increase by two fifths. It's a line with a positive slope. Slope is plus two fifths. So the line is going in this direction. We can write the coordinates of any point on this line as x equals 2t minus 1 over t plus 2, comma y equals t over t plus 2. So by letting t equal any value we like, except minus 2, because if t is minus 2, we're dividing by 0, we can't divide by 0, we can get a point on the line. Of course, we can also calculate dy dx, which is the slope of the line. Well, we know that when a line is written in the form y equals mx plus c, then the slope of the line is the coefficient of x. So dy dx is m. The letter m is used to denote the slope of a line, which is 2 fifths. So remember, dy dx is the slope of a tangent to a curve. Well, the curve here happens to be a straight line. So if we pick, say, this point here, and get the tangent to the curve at this point. Well, the tangent to the curve is just the curve itself, or the line. The curve happens to be a line. And the slope of the tangent is the slope of the line, which is 2 fifths. Now, in practice, we would not get dy dx this way. So now I'm going to show you how to answer a question like this. How to find dy dx when x and y are given in terms of a single parameter. That single parameter is usually denoted by the letter t. We don't have to write y in terms of x and then get dy dx. What we can do is we can work out dx dt, differentiate x with respect to t for this function here, then get dy dt, and we can combine dx dt and dy dt to find dy dx. So I'll start by getting dx dt. So that means I want to differentiate this function here, differentiate x with respect to time. You can see that we have a quotient here, so we use the quotient rule. We take v, which is the expression underneath, that's t plus 2, multiply it by du dt, which is the derivative of the numerator, du dt is 2. Then we have a minus sign, then we take u, which is the numerator, 2t minus 1, multiply by the derivative of the denominator, that's dv dt, which is 1. And we put this over v squared. v is t plus 2. So this is t plus 2 squared. So this is the quotient rule. I won't go through this now. It's covered in previous videos. So let's just, just simplify this. We have 2 times t here. That's plus 2t. And we have a minus 2t. So the 2t's will actually cancel. Then we have a plus 4 and a minus minus 1. It's 4 plus 1 is 5. So we get 5 over t plus 2 squared. Now we get dy dt next. So we can see that uh, this function y of t is a quotient. So let's, we let u equal the numerator, which is t, and let v equal the denominator, which is um, t plus 2. So by the quotient rule, we have v du dt minus u dv dt all over v squared. So we have v, which is t plus 2, times du dt, which is 1. That's the derivative of t with respect to t. Minus u, which is t, times the, der the derivative of t plus 2 with respect to t, which is 1. And we divide that by v squared. Let's simplify this. We'll have a plus t and a minus t. The t's will actually cancel on top here. We end up with 2 over t plus 2 squared. Now we are interested in dy dx. We can get dy dx from both of these derivatives. We can take dy dt and multiply it by dt dx. Now, these der derivatives are not really fractions, but they actually behave like fractions. Um, when we multiply dy dt by dt dx, we can uh, cancel out these dt's. So this operation is actually allowable. So we take dy dt, which is 2 over t plus 2 squared, and multiply by dt d dx. What's dt dx? Well, that's just dx dt turned upside down. That's t plus 2 squared divided by 5. So we just turn this fraction here upside down. You can see that the t plus 2 squares cancel out, and we end up getting 
two fifths as you saw before. So this is the way you will normally do this question. Of course there are times when you have no choice but to do it this way because it might not be possible to write y in terms of x that easily. Um, it, might, it mightn't even be possible. So it was for this example we could write y in terms of x. In part 2 we want to explain what the answer to part 1 tells us about the shape of the graph. So we see that dy dx is 2 fifths. Well 2 fifths is a constant, it doesn't change. So the slope of the graph, well we actually know what the graph is, we know it's this, but let's suppose we don't know what it is. Um, we know that the slope of the graph is constant. So that means the graph must be a straight line. So the slope never changes. The slope is two-fifths. So no matter which point we pick, the slope of the graph is two-fifths. The tangent at this point, the tangent coincides with the line. The slope of the tangent is equal to the slope of the line. The tangent at this point. So the tangents are always oh, have slopes of two-fifths. No matter what value of x we have. See, dy dx does not depend on x. So the slope of y is a constant, so y is the function. We could also call it f of x. If that's the case, then the graph of y is a straight line. Of course, we don't know the exact, all the details of this straight line. We know that its slope is two-fifths. So, you know, we know that the equation of the line must equal y equals two-fifths x plus some number c. Because if we work out dy dx here, we get we get two fifths. If we differentiate y with respect to x, we get two fifths. If we differentiate the constant c, we get zero. Uh, so we know that the that y is a straight line, but we don't know what c is from this information. But we know from the way we did it at the start that y equals two fifths x plus one fifth. We have all the details. But just from knowing that dy dx equals two fifths we can say that it's a straight line that has this form, y equals 2 fifths x plus some number c. So this is a straight line with a slope of 2 fifths.